Okay, well, happy Tuesday morning to you all. Headed out for a work commute today on the Rebel 1100 again. Uh, I'm out of my break-in miles now and uh, starting to play with it a little bit more. Of course, the roads are wet this morning, so I'm not going to be too rambunctious. Uh, stop and get some fuel. I'm down. This will be my what, third fuel up, I guess. Uh, and uh, one of my channel viewers, uh, another uh, Rebel DCT owner, uh, sent me a note saying if I wanted a really good smooth ride on this thing with plenty of power go into user mode and set the options for power all the way up uh, the torque control all the way up uh, or torque sensitivity whatever it's called engine braking to minimum and then the other one that you don't see here until you're in programming mode is the DCT mode you set it to the lowest so what that does is it gives you full engine power but it makes the bike shift super early uh, to keep the RPMs down he said it's uh, real good for fuel economy and uh, plenty of power so so it's basically rain mode with all the power instead of no power. Anyway, cool idea. So I rode around with that yesterday, and uh, I'm going to do that today. Let's see how it goes. It's a little chilly this morning. We had a big rainstorm roll through Houston. Uh, early uh, around 4 a.m. I guess it was lots of lightning thunder heavy rain downpours some areas got about an inch other areas almost two inches just BAM all at once <laughs> it didn't last very long it was only a couple of hours but now we've got uh, all the wet roads left over and it's a little chilly uh, what does it say it is 63 yeah, it's probably about that 61 I think is what I saw the official temp was but uh, we're supposed to have a nice day for the rest of the day uh, until late this evening and then we've got more rain coming in for tomorrow and Thursday it's supposed to be rainy so don't know if I'll be riding or not we'll see My accessories should be showing up this week, uh, at least the driver's seat and the, uh, uh, what should you get, the uh, rear rack, the solo rack on the rear, that should be showing up, I think Thursday, so we'll see. Uh, I also ordered some uh, setback risers for the bars from uh, ROX, ROX, and I don't know if they're going to fit or not call this my uh, naivety but I'm not really sure about bar sizing these bars are one inch I measured them with calipers they're right at one inch and then they taper to seven eighths over here at the controls and the handle grips all the bar risers that I found for cruisers and stuff like that are all one and an eighth so I'm not sure if that's just kind of that industry thing you know like two by fours they're not really two by four they're you know one and was it seven eighths or whatever anyway uh, so I don't know if this is going to be a, a standard size and they've got little shims or whatever that you use for slightly undersized bars or whatever, but you know, we'll figure it out. So those uh, bar risers that I got uh, are like one inch rise and one and a half back, uh, if I remember the specs correctly. And that's exactly what I want. I don't really want the bars to come up much. I just want them to come back. So we'll see how that goes. Those should be arriving... Thursday, Friday, something like that. Okay, let's fill this guy up. I've been tracking my uh, stats on Fuley, but they haven't added this bike in Fuley yet. Uh, I just put it in as a custom bike and uh, submitted the request for them to uh, add it to their database, but I haven't heard back yet. Okay, back to premium unleaded. So it seems like my fuel economy on this is averaging somewhere in the low 40s, somewhere you know, 40, 41 to 43, somewhere in that ballpark, which is yeah, kind of to be expected. I haven't really had it out on long, steady highway cruises yet, so uh, I would imagine uh, under steady state it would do pretty well. Ooh, getting there. I can go a little more. Well, let's just go for eight bucks, shall we? There we go, 2.5 gallons. 
I could go a little more in there, but that's right up to the bottom of that neck, so let's not press our luck, shall we? If you overfill this, it's going to go straight down this drain tube right there and onto the ground or onto the motor or wherever that drain tube ends up. Stinky. Do my mileage calculations as usual. Okay, so my the computer at least says that my consumption was 44.3 on this tank. So yeah, mid 40s. That's not bad. Trip A was 112 miles, and it still had you know a gallon and change in it. It wasn't uh, quite down to reserve yet, even though that was flashing. I still had over a gallon apparently. So now how to reset? Hold it, hold it, hold it. Yeah, there you go. Average consumption A. Okay, let's get on the road. Hey, that's not good for the phone. I still need to get me a tank bag or something on here to uh, hold the phone and my other stuff. Oh, I forgot to mention before I left the house, uh, I put the Denali sound bomb down here. Uh, that factory horn was just horrible. Okay, off we go. I was reading uh, comments and... Uh, Motorcycle.com just did a, a review on the 1100 DCT and they were saying that uh, some of the commenters were mentioning that a belt drive would have been nice on this. That was the first thing I thought when I was looking at the drive line on this. It's like, man, a belt would have been fantastic because it's no maintenance, you know? Well, very little maintenance anyway. check the tension on it every now and then make sure you don't have rocks and crap in your uh, grooves um, anyway belt final drive would have been great uh, Harleys have been using them forever uh, Can-Am spiders have been using them there's a lot of bikes that use them uh, plenty strong very little stretch to compensate for and you don't oil them lube them any of that you just ride them that's it uh, I'm sure there were some manufacturing costs, you know, just chains and sprockets are so common, everybody uses them, and it's inexpensive, you know, keeping a price point down, which I get. I don't think uh, belts would have made it that much different. They might have had to make the uh, swing arm area, you know, over here on the left side, the drive side a little bit larger, and maybe the uh, counter shaft sprocket clearance a little larger, because typically belts have got to be a bit wider than chains to handle the same amount of torque. but. Anywho, <laughs> so on my phone there, somebody was saying, yeah, well, a chain keeps the production cost down. Yes, I know that. I mentioned that in my comment. <laughs> it still would have been nice. A shaft drive, I don't think I would want a shaft on this, because with shaft bikes, uh, you know, the Shadows and Gold Wings and any of those, uh, I've had plenty of Kawasaki's that were shafties. You have shaft effect, and uh, on a bike with limited cornering clearance and shaft effect, you can end up dragging stuff you didn't intend to drag when you get in and out of the throttle. Ask me how I know. Um, anyway, with a belt, you don't have the uh, right angle losses that you do with a shaft. Anytime you change direction 90 degrees, you lose a bunch of power. So, belts are still. Uh, in the same rotational direction. And for all those purists out there that are saying, oh, automatic motorcycle, that's sacrilege, and blah, blah, and you're lazy, and you're a pussy, and all that. Man, I've been riding bikes for 40 plus years, and I tell you, in traffic, not having to feather the clutch and hunt for gears, it's never a chore, really, but when you're in stop and go, it can be a ginormous pain in the ass. And this thing, you know, even just inching up behind traffic there that keeps moving all you do is just barely crack the throttle you're not feathering the clutch you're not worrying about stalling the motor any of that you just trundle right up so i'll do a full kind of 
in-depth review of my thoughts on the DCT. I'm not a, an expert yet by any means, but, uh, you know, just kind of my overall impressions of usability and everything, a uh, full walk around of the features, and then I'll start doing some performance tests, just hammering the hell out of it uh, in standard mode, uh, sport mode, all that, uh, and then riding around for a while in manual mode and, you know, do all the shifting with the paddles over here and just see kind of where I feel the best uh, performance and fit is. Uh, I can already tell you early on it's going to be leave it in uh, probably sport mode, maybe user mode, and you kind of tailor it a little bit. Uh, this setting that I'm working with here this morning is already feeling pretty good, but in sport mode, you know, it holds the RPMs much longer, it downshifts earlier, it's got more aggressive uh, throttle, you know, blipping, uh, rev matching on the downshifts, that sort of thing. So. Uh, if you're looking for a performance ride, definitely sport or one of the more aggressive modes probably is going to do the best. Uh, as far as manually shifting it all the time, eh, I don't know. If you're going to do that, just get a manual. So that's a really good acceleration right there, and I was not even an eighth of a turn open. I mean, just uh, I wish I had a dial indicator on here. I barely had that cracked open at all, and it was 45 miles an hour. It shifted up super early. I think it was keeping the shifts under 3,000 RPM. I didn't really look. Uh-oh. A few people asked in the comments why why I was running around, you know, in sixth gear at such low speeds and all that. Well, you know, obviously the DCT is going to do what it wants to do unless you put it in manual. So that's Honda's mapping as far as the RPM and load settings go. If you're not putting much load on it, it's going to shift up as early as possible for lower engine RPM and better efficiency. Uh, and the motor's got plenty of torque, you know, it's roll on it. I haven't looked at the exact numbers on the torque curve, but at this speed right here, a little over 2,000 RPM, you've probably got better than 50 pound-feet of torque. It really, really pulls. Uh, and then the torque peak is at like 4,250 or 4,500, and that's, you know, over 70 pound-feet. Man, it really twists. So you don't have to uh, rev this motor out at all uh, to get the performance out of it or be able to squirt away. You can. So let the DCT do its thing. Honda has done a lot of research and a lot of uh, tuning on this DCT platform over the last, you know, what, de decade or whatever it's been. I think this is probably the fourth uh, iteration of the DCT, maybe, maybe longer. Hell, I say I'm no expert on the DCTs. I can tell you it's a completely different experience than a scooter, though. Uh, I mentioned it before on this particular stretch. I think almost in this same spot. Uh, it's not a scooter. Uh, this is actually a six-speed geared transmission. It's got two clutches, one on each end of the, uh, the gear set. Uh, one shaft is running your odd gears, one shaft is running your even gears. And every time you hear it shift, what it's doing is shifting the next gear, not the gear that you're in. So when you hear a shift, it, it's already been in the gear that you're just going up to. It's shifting for the next one. It's pretty impressive. So it's always engaged in that next gear. So the, the upshifts are, you know, lightning quick. Well, downshifts too. Just There's no lag at all. Uh, the only lag is in how fast the DCT pumps. The hydraulics want to uh, engage or disengage those clutch packs. I'm waiting for the factory service manual to come out. Hello, water. Yeah, I'm getting wet. Oh, this is good stuff. That's a busted water main is what this is. Yep, wet legs. Um, the uh, factory service manuals aren't available yet. I wish they were. Um, I would like to see inside of this uh, transmission to get a good exploded view. So I'll just go looking at the uh, Africa Twin 1100 and see kind of what's in there. The main thing I'm after is uh, the maintenance procedures and stuff like that. Uh, there are two engine oil drain plugs underneath this thing, not just one. Uh, so I'm going to be getting two gold plug MP01s uh, because apparently these plugs are not magnetic from the factory, just like all the other Honda stuff. 
and uh, there are two oil filters as well. You've got your engine oil filter, and then there's a DCT uh, clutch oil filter. So, uh, I don't like following behind. Dude, thank you. Um, yeah, anyway. So, there's a little more uh, where maintenance is concerned, but I don't know what the frequency of the oil changes on the... Uh, uh, the DCT oil, you know, the, the clutch filter, all that is. I would imagine it's probably about the same. It might even be double what the uh, engine oil filter is. I don't know. People were asking to see how quick it uh, shifts down, so let me get an opening in traffic here and I'll hammer it. So it's in sixth, full throttle, and that's in that custom mode. It only did one downshift, but <laughs> I jumped 20 miles an hour, so that was pretty good. I'll put it in sport mode uh, in a little while and hammer it down and see how fast and how quickly, uh, you know, how, how many gears it shifts down. cruise control. Well, welcome back to my day in progress. I got done with my work tasks and went over to the warehouse and started up all of my machines to freshen up the motors and the batteries. And I was headed home and I decided to take a detour out here into the back roads putting some more miles on the bike I'm out here on 529 and northwest of Katy right now not going anywhere in particular just going just out for a ride it's pretty windy today and it's very hazy I don't know if you can see that on camera it's real hazy lots of bugs too I'm getting hit uh, pretty windy though I'm headed right into it right now. Temperature's good though, you know, 75. Just gonna ride until I find somewhere to turn and ride some more. Today. <laughs> I never 
run down that one. wind is inconsistent. So I ended up circling around uh, unintentionally on one of my favorite routes, just kind of on autopilot, so maybe my subconscious is leading me. <laughs> Came through here just uh, a couple of days ago with the boys, coming back from uh, 
the sprint car races up in uh, Page, Texas. Ended up over on 36, coming down south and uh, cutting over right here through the edge of Sealy. And I'll take the park road back, just like I did the other day. So this is the same route that I did my uh, Saturday break-in ride. Returning back through the uh, little back roads behind Stephen F. Austin Park. Indian paintbrushes are coming up. We noticed a bunch of blue bonnets on the highway uh, on our way back from uh, Giddings and Page area. It is windy though. This is the house where I saw the horse uh, tied up to the basketball goal. <laughs> the poor horse. Ooh, bumpy, bumpy. Ooh, that's worse than it was the other day. Yeah, that's nice for that credit scoot over. Maybe they're just parking. Don't know. I don't want to go straight. Let's go this way. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a rough road. Oof. Come back here on my XT sometime and just blast through it at full throttle. Probably won't feel a thing.
rebuild. They were going to fly to the right, so don't dodge right. Make sure the road's clear, go the other way. <laughs> your path.
stopping along the uh, access road here on I-10 to take a look at all the uh, bridge construction and whatever they're doing back here. Big cranes, big overpasses, big, 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 heavy. Don't want that to fall on your toe. What goes this way? I don't think I've ever been back there. Oh yes, I have. I know where that goes. That's just a gravel dead end down there. Okay, back to the road. Goofing off. I think I'm going to run this tank out today, see how far it gets on, you know, kind of back road cruising kind of distance. Okay, I just stopped by the bank to take care of something real quick, and I'm back to flashing, which is where I started this morning. So I've pretty much run this down a full tank of uh, what I would have had, or what would have been a full tank, I guess. So I'm going to go fill it up, and we'll see how it does.